guys, what's going on? It's Alex here for TechFlow, and today, hopefully, we're gonna take your broadband and knowledge of broadband to the next level, so you can better understand why things fail. I'm gonna give you my tips that you can do for free at home to hopefully improve your online experience, and then also recommend you some equipment to improve it furthermore if you want to spend some cash. Now, networks are something that people, especially in the 21st century, really take for granted, and then seem to get frustrated when they fail and don't work work and more often than not go to blame the ISP when it's probably not their fault. Now there's a few steps that we need to take. Now with the intro out the way, let's get straight on with this video. Okay, so welcome to my kitchen. Like I've mentioned, I've got some free tips for you guys to do at home to hopefully improve your networking experience. But if you're still having issues, we're also gonna check out some bits of kit behind me later on that you can buy to hopefully improve the experience furthermore. But before we start any of this, it's really, really important that we get some baseline figures to base all of our testing off. And to get them, it's gonna be really important that we are hardwired to our network. So as you can see here, this is a typical setup in the UK. I've got the internet coming in here, going straight into this BT router. This is giving off Wi-Fi so we could connect to this with our phones, but what I'm gonna do is take this patch cable here, plug it into the back of this router here, and then I'm also gonna take this Ethernet to USB-C adapter, plug it in here, so then I can plug this straight here into my iPad. Now you may have an Ethernet cable or port on your computer and you can plug straight in there absolutely fine. Now next what you need to do, and this bit's really important, you need to make sure nothing else is using your network because we need to get the speeds that are coming into the house. So if you've got other wired devices plugged into the back of the router, unplug them, and if you've got people using the Wi-Fi, tell them to stop using it or do these tests when nobody's around. To do the test, what you're gonna wanna do is go to your web browser and type in wifi man.com and then click return. And hopefully it should say starting test and you'll have a number displayed on your screen. Now, connecting to your network with a cable like we have here to do these tests is the best way to connect to your network. The best full stop. As you can see, I got 305 meg down and 48 megabits up. That's absolutely great, but that can quickly turn to absolutely nothing if things aren't set up correctly. So to recap, in short, if you've got less than about 40 to 50 megabytes on the download, then we can move on to step number two. If you have less than that, well, you may wanna look at changing your internet provider, look at what's in the area and who can maybe offer you some higher speeds. And if you can't get higher speeds in your area, well, maybe you'd like a word from our sponsor. Huge thanks to Smarty for sponsoring this video. And while we're improving your home broadband, we may as well improve your mobile broadband too. Alex, how are we gonna do that? The first thing is get out of all those pesky contracts that you're in. The second thing is pay less. And the third thing is get more. And Smarty aim to do all of that. Let's explain with a list. Okay, so for 12 pounds, you're gonna get completely unlimited calls, completely unlimited texts, 50 gigabytes of mobile data on the 4G and 3G network, which has no speed caps on it whatsoever. And all of this for just 12 pound a month. Oh, and I forgot the best bit. With this, no contracts. You cancel whenever you want. The only catch is if you wanna get hold of this awesome deal, you have to do so with my link in the description and do it before the 8th of April because that is when this is coming to a close. Like I said, 50 gig of data on the 4G network, unlimited calls, unlimited texts, no contract. Go on, use our link down there below and sort out your mobile network too. Huge shout out to Smarty for sponsoring this video. And back to the network improvements. Okay, so I've moved a couple meters away from the table over there where the BT router is and I'm connected to the BT router's single SSID which is the name that it gives off that you select in the Wi-Fi settings and now if we're going to do the same thing go back to Wi-Fi man hit return we'll hopefully see some really really slow speeds yeah as you can see we're pulling literally about 20 meg and the router is sat a stone's throw away so why is that now, most routers nowadays anyway, give off two bands. And for the sake of it, we'll call them the two gigahertz band and the five gigahertz band. And all you really need to know is that the two gigahertz band is really, really slow, but has a decent range. Whereas the five gigahertz band is really, really fast 
but has a really, really short range. And now how do you know whether you're connected to the two or the five? Well, with this BT router, you don't. If I go into the settings, as you can see, we've just got one network right here, BT 8J AF 5Q. We have no idea whether we're connected to 2.4, or five. To change it, we're gonna to need to get a few bits from our router. Now, these are usually on the bottom or on the back of the router on a printed card, sometimes removable like it is uh, on this router here. And what we're trying to find is an IP address and an admin password. And the admin password is sometimes different to the wireless password. The IP address is 192.168.1.254. So we're gonna go ahead and pipe that into our web browser. Now all of this will look completely different depending on the router that you have, but just know that the premise is the same. Once you're on the display page of your router, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and log in. On this BT router to log in, I actually have to go into the advanced settings and then click on wireless, and then it's gonna ask me for the password, which I'll type in off of this. Now because this router was provided free with my broadband service, it's absolutely dog shit and it won't let me separate the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. The only way I can get access to that 5 gigahertz band alone is by completely disabling the 2.4. Now, you can do this, but what you should note is that some devices only work on 2.4 gigahertz. Most phones and tablets and iPads and laptops are fine on 5, but things like smart bulbs, for example, will only work on 2.4. So that's just something to bear in mind. Okay, so back on the sofa to redo our tests. Now, hopefully you've managed to separate the 2.4 and the five with a separate name so you can make sure that you are connected to your five gigahertz network. Or you're like me, where you've had to completely disable 2.4. Nevertheless, as you can see on the iPad, we are connected to the 123 network, which is coming from the BT router on the five gigahertz network. So if we now go to Safari, go back to Wi-Fi Man and do our speed, as you can see, 280 meg, just like that. Okay, so welcome upstairs to my office. Now I know you're at home enjoying your super, super high speed five gigahertz networks. Great, but what you've noticed is that when you travel a little distance from the router, maybe one, two walls away, you'll notice that that five gigahertz network significantly starts to drop off. I'm upstairs in my office, like I've said, and as you can see, we're still connected to our five gigahertz network. But if I go ahead and run a speed test up here, go to Wi-Fi man, as you can see, well, we're getting 62, 50 meg. We can't even get over 100 meg. And remember, we've got 300 coming to the house. That's what we're paying for. We should get that on all of our devices, right? Well, there's two things you can do here. The first one is router positioning. The second one, unfortunately, now this is where you're gonna have to start spending some money. You need to add some access points. Now we just got a result of 51.6 with the router sat down here on the floor in the comms cupboard where the internet comes into this house. Now simply what I'm gonna do is take this and move it up here and just sort of just leave it up there. And now by simply moving that BT router a couple of meters from off the floor to somewhere a little bit higher up, I guarantee that will completely change the game in here. Let's see what we get now. We're back up, I mean 240, 250, I would be happy with that. And all we've done there is just move the access point off the floor. Wi-Fi falls like anything would do with gravity. So the higher up you can get your access points, the better. But if you are still struggling, yes, now you need to add some access points. Now, with anything in life, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. These are power line adapters and they seem like a really, really cool idea. Basically, you get these two boxes, you plug one of them in near the router and you connect it to your router uh, via an ethernet cable like this one. And then you take this one and you run off somewhere else in your house, you plug it in, you utilize one of those on the top there and then apparently you've got internet through the home's wiring. Hmm. So what we're gonna go ahead and do here is plug this power line adapter into the wall and then we're gonna take an ethernet cable into the top of the power line and then the other end of it is gonna go into our router here. Okay, perfect. And now, ooh, technically we can go somewhere else in the house, plug this one in, plug in a patch cable, 
Okay, so I have um, I've tried absolutely everything to try and get these power line adapters to work. I've factory reset them, I've tried to pair them, and they just won't find each other in my house. Really strange because my house is a new build, so you'd think the electrical wiring in this house would be half decent, but these things just won't even connect to each other at all. Power line adapters, avoid them, never buy them. I was hoping that they were gonna work at least, but they were gonna be really, really slow because they usually are. And they're also affected by other electrical appliances in the house. Like if you turn your microwave on, it will probably knock out your power line adapters. Funny story, I actually sell internet for a living, right? And I went round to one of my client's houses who buys internet off me. And he was pointing his finger at me like this and he was saying, Alex, your internet sucks, I'm gonna go with somebody else. What did I do? I walked into his office and he was using power line adapters. So what did I do? I told him he was using power line adapters and said we should run a cable, you know, like this, an Ethernet cable, Cat5e, Cat6, or Cat6a from your router to the computer. We did that and you know what? He hasn't called me since. Now we can take that idea of running an Ethernet cable from our main router and we can use it with another router or an access point which is then going to give us more Wi-Fi. So essentially we're taking a hardwired connection from our router, taking it somewhere else in the house and then making another Wi-Fi network. And I'm going to show you how to do that with this really, really cheap TP-Link router that I'll have in the description. Plug it into a device that you can configure this with. I've got my iPad here. And again, plug it into another one of those four ports on the back, not the internet port. And for this particular router, we need to go to the internet and go to 192.168.0.1 and then click return. And it should bring us to the home page of this router. Now next, it's asking us to set this up as a router, asking for our internet connection type. We don't need this. Yes, this is a router and it can be a router, but we're not bothered about the functionality of its routing. Our main router is already doing all the routing for our network. What we want this to be is just a dumb access point for, well, wired, all wireless devices to connect to. So we go to advanced instead of quick setup, and then we're gonna go down to operation mode, and then we should have the option to turn this into an access point. And there we go, click save. Now, once it's rebooted, it should redirect you to its new web page automatically, which looks like this. And it gives you the option just to simply set a 2.4 or 5 gigahertz wireless network name. I wish our original BT router let us have both. So weird that it didn't. Now this bit's absolutely crucial. When you're putting this in, you need to make sure that they are identical to your name router. So the SSID or the name of both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks, obviously they're different, but you need to put them in here and they need to match, be exactly the same. Same thing with the password and then click next. So now we've got our new access point configured, we can unplug it and take it to the location that needs Wi-Fi. We're out here on my deck right now, and if we go on the iPad again and go to Wi-Fi Man, this isn't plugged in, so we're just gonna see what the signal's like. Okay, as I thought, we're getting about 15, oh, it's jumped up to 25, maybe 20 megabits through a couple of brick walls. So now you're gonna wanna plug the first end of our Ethernet cable into your original router, and the second end into the internet port of this TP-Link router. Again just so you are aware, with this setup, you can also utilize these four ports on the back to plug in some hardwired devices. So you could run one cable down to your lounge, for example, have this sat next to your TV. You could then plug your TV in, your set-top box in, your Sonos in, and this is giving off Wi-Fi. And this was 40 pounds on Amazon. And there you have it, straight to three bars. So if we go again back to Wi-Fi Man, hit refresh. Again, we're right next to the AP, so there you go. 260 meg out in the garden. It really is that simple and it just takes a little bit of thought process. I'm gonna put all the links to everything I've talked about today in the description. So if you wanna buy it, follow along, please feel free to do so. And I really do hope these small little tips have helped. So there you guys have it. This video has been a long time in the making for me to sort of collate all of my tips and things that you guys can do to improve your home broadband. If you are still having problems, by the way, let us know on Twitter at TechFlowTweets or you can get me personally uh, at MarsBarGaming and hopefully we can get your internet problems sorted so everybody can have a better experience online. But I hope you guys have enjoyed anyway. My name's been Alex. This has been TechFlow. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.